Hello students, uh, today we are going to see the last topic of uh, work, energy and power uh, that is called collisions. It is a very very important topic. Uh, you will have uh, quite a lot of numericals will be emerging out of this. And this also is a very uh, important and a little big derivation. So please take care and take note of this. I am just going to do only collisions today. Um, so co what is collision? Whenever two bodies just collide with each other. Um, so um, when they strike on each other then it is called collisions <coughs> so collisions uh, can be of um, if you take out collision it could be of two types and um, one is called in elastic collision next one is called elastic collision we always think about elastic means what we see like a rubber band or some kind of an elastic material even now you are wearing face mask and elastic is there that's what elastic is but in physics elastic is not the actual rubber elastic it is it seems to be something which quickly get back to the original position is called elastic so when a, a metal ball is there strong metal is there it's dropped down on a floor it collides and quickly it rebounds back this is called elastic perfectly elastic because it is strong and it quickly gets back to the original position that is called elastic and um, inelastic means instead of a steel ball you drop a big ball of clay you just drop it what will happen it rebounds no it doesn't rebound it just comes and it just uh, gets stuck to this one then it's perfectly inelastic right um, two molecules water molecules when it just comes together and then hits together and again after skating it rebounds back in the same velocity it came back that is called inelastic that is called elastic perfectly elastic it comes collides and then goes back in the same velocity that's that's called elastic okay so we there is a two big division of inelastic and elastic elastic means it quickly rebounds back and goes back to the original position inelastic means it just gets stuck to the same place itself and it doesn't rebound also that is called inelastic so elastic collision elastic collision has very very important three features are there number 1 in an elastic collision momentum is conserved energy is conserved and then kinetic energy is conserved remember conservation of momentum conservation of energy is must everywhere in the universe wherever you go what all collision it is these two will be must but here in elastic only the one distinguished uh, feature is kinetic energy is conserved here in inelastic collision if it is an inelastic collision <coughs> first is momentum is conserved number 2 energy is also conserved and number 3 is kinetic energy is not conserved so that's the way it is so kinetic energy is not conserved here kinetic energy is conserved that is what elastic is that means the total kinetic energy of two bodies before collision maybe it is coming here and it is coming here and it is colliding before kinetic before the collision this has one kinetic energy this has another kinetic energy add together there's a total kinetic energy is equal to the final kinetic energy of both the bodies maybe both the bodies rebound back this is going here this is going here and it's rebounding back total kinetic energy after collision that's what it is but here in this one before it is some collision kinetic energy is there after kinetic after collision the kinetic energy will be less in this one sometimes even zero also 
So the kinetic energy before collision and after collision is not same. Here the kinetic energy before collision and after collision is same. So write down kinetic energy before collision is equal to total kinetic energy. You can write down total kinetic energy, kinetic energy after collision. Here write the reverse the total kinetic energy before collision is not equal to the total kinetic energy after collision. So this is a big difference between elastic collision and inelastic collision. So that's what it is given here type of collision. I have already told about elastic collision. This is the elastic collision and then inelastic collision. These two things I have already told about it. Now we are going to see the important derivation here. The derivation is in the next page, page number 246, 346. It is elastic collision in one dimension. Write down this topic. Elastic collision in one dimension. Elastic collision in one dimension. Okay. So, consider two bodies. A with mass m1 moving with velocity v1 u1 and body B of mass m2 moving with velocity u2. Now look at this one. My u2 arrow mark is small. u1 arrow mark is big. What does it mean? Which is going in a higher velocity? u1 is greater than u2. This is the first scenario. So what will happen? This is going in a higher speed and this is also a little seems to be a bigger mass. m1 is bigger than m2. Right? After some time what will happen? This big mass of body A will collide with this one body B. There is a collision takes place. What is this one? Before collision. So after collision what happens? After collision body A which will go in V1 and body B will go in V2. But look at this one. I put this arrow mark bigger. V2 is bigger. V1 is smaller. That means the U1 which was big velocity now reduces to small velocity after collision. The small velocity becomes to the bigger velocity and the same body is M1, M2 here. This is after collision. So what do we write here? Consider both two bodies before collision M1 and M2 with the velocity U1 and U2 initial velocity. After collision after the collision the final velocities of the bodies of A and B is V1 and V2. Right? So the first thing is you need to do is according to law of conservation of momentum. So what is law of conservation of momentum? M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 V1 plus M2 V2. This is the first equation. This, this momentum, to both the momentum together M1 U1 plus M2 U2 is equal to M1 V1 into M2 V2. That's what is written here. Now what you will do is bring both the M1 terms to the one side. So M1 U1 minus M1 V1. M1 also here, M1 also here. It's all both of them is uh, here. And this one goes to the next side. M2 V2 minus M2 U2. Please be very careful about what, how you are putting U and V. V should be very much a wedge, wedge should be there. So M1 U1 minus V1 is equal to M2 v2 minus u2 this is equation number one we have come to the first equation very important next line since the body's collision is elastic what is the significance of elastic collision kinetic energy is 
conserved kinetic energy is conserved means what does it mean by that all right what is the kinetic energy conserved the kinetic energy before collision is going to be equal to kinetic energy after collision so half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square is equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square so that's the value half can be taken common outside and it could be cancelled out also every half will be cancelling out so m1 u1 square plus m2 u2 square is equal to m1 v1 square plus m2 v2 square very simple same thing we have written what we need to do is the same way we will be doing it gather this one m1 terms gather together m1 u1 square this will come here minus m1 v1 square is equal to m2 v2 square is here this will go to the next side m2 u2 square please be once again careful about whether you put the right terms and then take common m1 outside u1 square minus v1 square is equal to m2 v2 square minus u2 square this is equation number 2 now 1 and 2 you try to divide each other 2 divided by 1 so once you divide 2 divided by 1 what will happen here m1 u1 square minus v1 square upon m1 times of u1 minus v1 is equal to m2 v2 square minus u2 square upon m2 v2 minus u2 you might ask a question sir why are you doing such a big derivation first of all we have done the law of conservation of momentum we got this equation now kinetic energy is conserved and we are doing another equation now we are taking a ratio here what are we finally finding the final finding is look at the target we are going ahead I am telling in the middle of the equation derivation is just over half where it is finished we are going to find out v1 and v2 the final expression we need to derive is v1 is one expression v2 is another expression the final velocity of both the bodies now this will give it cancels out now this also you can have finally u1 square u1 plus v1 is equal to v2 plus u2 so that's the way it is so u1 minus u2 this u2 has gone here is equal to v2 minus v1 so that is the exchange of this one what is this two things is called this two is u1 and u2 and that is u1 minus u2 so it is this is bigger this is smaller and it is beginning it is kind of a subtraction is there next one is v2 minus v1 so this is v2 and this is v1 it are subtracting these two final velocities so what does that mean call as relative initial velocity is equal to relative final velocity the relative initial velocity is equal to relative final velocity in other words they call it as the relative velocity of approach what is approach means this or both of them are before collision it is going to be approach each other and then colliding with each other and afterwards after collision what happens it reproaches it goes away from each other it is equal to relative velocity of reproach so that's the very very important third equation now we are in the middle of the derivation now we are just on the middle of the derivation as we move forward the derivation will get over now what we need to do is look at this look at this three equations here equation number one this is the main equation 
this will be coming again and again again we will be using this one because of this kinetic energy we are able to get this one the relative velocity of reproach is approach is equal to relative velocity of reproach so we are just subtracting the initial velocity the initial two velocities and subtracting the my final two velocities take one of the velocity here v2 from this expression and substitute it here if you want to get v1 if you want to get v1 take v2 from this expression how to take v2 from this expression okay from 3 v2 is equal to bring this one to the next side u1 minus u2 plus v1 all right this is the expression substitute in equation number 1 now when you substitute in equation number 1 what will happen take this equation and put it here I am just taking you to the equation number 1 so same equation I am going to write m1 u1 minus v1 is equal to m2 where is v2 this v2 you remove it and put this entire expression right it is u1 minus u2 plus v1 minus u2 this is removed as the whole expression here minus the same u2 is here now what will happen here this will become m2 u1 u2 and u2 now it is plus v1 minus 2 u2 is here and this is m1 v1 minus sorry u1 minus v1 already I said to you what you are going to find out we are going to find out v1 try to keep v1 all in one direction press everything to the other direction you will get the answer you can slowly do your things finally come to other pass this video now this v1 has to go to one side both the v1 should be in one side rest everything to be the other side and then solve yourself and see what is happening now pass the video and do it i will also to keep doing it go ahead So M1 U1 I was just putting it inside M2 U1 plus M2 V1 minus 2 M2 U2 Now this V1 and this V1 has to go to one side Right So minus M1 V1 is there Again minus M2 V1 it is coming This is come to the next side and then m2 u1 is there minus 2 m2 u2 is there this one and this one comes to the other side minus m1 u1 this is gone to the next side that's all v1 here another v1 is here so take it common outside here what happens here minus v1 you take it common outside so it is going to be m1 plus m2 right and then look at this expression look at this expression it becomes u1 and u1 is common here so u1 you can common take it common outside it's going to be m2 minus m1 minus 2 m2 u2 when this minus multiplies here when this minus multiplies here what will happen here i will just going to remove this minus v1 times of m1 plus m2 is going to be equal to when this multiplies u1 it can change m1 minus m2 right this will become plus 2 m2 u2 now finally we will get this one v1 is going to be equal to this one cross multiplication comes down is equal to m1 minus m2 upon m1 plus m2 plus 2 m2 u2 upon m1 plus m2 very important first equation is now got not big deal it is quite simple right now similarly for v2 you need to find out how to find out v2 very simple procedure is wherever u1 is there put u2 1 is there you put 2 wherever 2 is there you put 1 that's all done I am again repeating u1 means you put u2 m1 means put m2 
and M2 means put M1 down this is looks similar plus this is 2 M1 U1 upon M1 plus M2 second equation is done that's the way second equation will become first equation you derive second equation it will become a mirror image of what it is right so once you get this then it is pretty simple now you got the derivation done this is the final derivation now we need to finally go to the sum of the cases and with the, when this case is done then it is finished ok so above equation shows therefore the final velocities v1 and v2 is derived now special cases what are the special cases ok we will again look into the same thing of these two huge bodies are there these two huge bodies are there about A and B but we will keep changing the situation situation will keep changing and see how this formula fits in now look at this one this is the way so all the three is there first equation second equation and the diagram is there first case is what happens if this M1 and this M2 is equal now here it is e greater than M2 M1 is greater than M2 what if, if these two are equal then we are going to see the whole stuff again when the case number 1 when M1 equal to M2 equal to M itself so how will the equation change so that's a question now we are going to answer here so how this equation will change now both of them are M and M this entire thing will become 0 because M and M will get cancelled out 0 will become so this whole expression is 0 what will happen to this expression V1 is going to be equal to 2M here also 2M will be there M plus M is going to be equal to U2 V1 is going to be equal to U2 and here this will become 0 V2 is equal to and only here it will be there 2M and here also 2M will become equal to U1 so what is happening here the final velocity of the first body will become the it is, will be equal to the initial velocity of the second body u2 what is u2 u2 was this one the body b will transfer that velocity into the final velocity of this body final velocity of this body now u2 is getting transferred to u v1 when both the bodies are equal same size <coughs> body B will get the velocity of what was in the body of A and body B will going to get the body of velocity of A and body A will get the velocity of body B so you can write down the velocities of the bodies gets interchanged that's what it happens case number 2 case number 2 is when u2 is going to be equal to 0 case number 2 is you are going back to the same condition same condition is both is all are different different bodies like this different different bodies but one thing is this one is at rest ok u2 is at 0 means body B is at rest so this is coming and hitting it is already at sitting it is not moving it is sitting here u2 is equal to 0 when it hits here what happens this will hit will it bounce back or what will happen that's what we need to derive so put in this both expression when u2 is going to be equal to 0 here right so when u2 is 0 this whole thing will become 0 so v1 is going to be equal to u1 m1 minus m2 upon m1 plus m2 this will be the uh, first expression and what will happen to this one what will happen to this one v2 is going to be equal to this whole thing will become 0 here it is going to be equal to 2 m1 u1 upon m1 plus m2 this is the second expression that's fine so it is quite close you are able to 
finish this one right in this one again you can say what happens these two bodies are equal or whatever it is you can say take and find out right this is the second part of it the next one is what will happen if it is going to be a huge mass right what happens if m1 is going to be very very large so the diagram goes on like this so if this m1 is too huge a size and this is so tiny this m1 is too huge a size and m2 is very small and this is m1 and is coming and hitting what will happen and this is maybe it's a, it's a rest this is coming in u velocity u1 velocity it is coming and hitting here what you will do when m1 is greater than greater than m2 right on the third expression the third case is when m1 is when m1 is greater than greater than m2 so then what you now do is then ignore m1 in 1 and 2 ignore m1 so when you are ignoring m1 what will happen Ign you just don't do not consider m1 at all so there is no m1 here then so it's going to be only u1 and there's no m1 here so u1 minus m2 minus m2 u1 and then m2 all right so that's what the expression will emerge out to be so i'm just writing this expression again how it works here is going to be now look at this so v1 is going to be equal to ignore m1 so u1 minus m2 upon m2 because wherever m1 is there it just you have just neglected it will get cancelled out is equal to here also ignore m1 2 m1 u2 and then m2 so 2 m2 u2 upon m2 m2 will get cancelled out so minus u1 plus 2 u2 this is v1 if u2 was 0 if u2 was 0 v1 is going to be equal to minus u2 if u2 is going to be equal to 0 so what happens here is the huge body is coming with the velocity of u1 right and it is hitting here a body u2 is going to be equal to 0 so what happens to this whole thing this one so velocity of v1 is going to be equal to minus of u2 all right this will become the v1 will become equal to minus of u1 and then also you can write down this one m1 you just neglect m1 you neglect what will happen and m1 neglect neglect this one and you can write the next expression also right so that's why you are going to get this expression as look at this so when m2 is such a greater velocity uh, one is coming and hitting here so you will get this expression here this is the final expression similarly reverse also m2 is greater than greater than and ignore m2 and then you will get this expression all right all right um, this expression gets over now uh, the next two pages you need not really do it so this one is inelastic collision is not actually in the syllabus it doesn't come much and then elastic collision also it is two dimension it is just available there you need not really do it okay so the main expressions are getting over please read carefully the cases the cases you need to really read carefully so that the conclusions are very clear to you right okay children thank you